You know the people that have everything perfectly organized and in its place? Well, I used to cringe at those type of people. And if you're one of those people, then I really do admire you. I just wished that it came a lot more natural to me. Now, I assume you clicked on this video for a reason, and I also assume that there is probably one space in your home that could use a major facelift. It's an area that you're avoiding, I know you can name it off the top of your head, that you just keep putting off and putting off because the time is not right, it's not convenient, you don't know where to start, and you don't know what to do. Now this is a two hour marathon video, so this is a huge opportunity for you to finally tackle that space. Even if you don't even tackle the whole project, the hardest thing is getting started, and this is your opportunity. And the cool thing is, is that you get to do it along with me. If you're new here, my name is Michelle, and we will get to know each other throughout these next two hours. I'm a mom of three kids, five and under, and I struggle daily to keep my home clean and organized. I know organizing and decluttering is the way to go, but the process of it is gut-wrenching considering that there is already so much stuff piled on our plate. Initially, because we don't go to other people's houses and look at all their mess, I thought I was alone in this until I started sharing all of this here and I realized that you and I have a lot in common. I had a lot of shame around the way I was managing my home and the things that I had and the further and further I got behind, the more and more I felt the shame. So I'm not here to show you a picture perfect life. I'm here to show you how I can take control of the mess, take ownership of it and make progress every day. I do have tons of tips, encouragement and motivation throughout the next four videos, which a marathon video is several videos compiled together into one long video. So no, I did not do all of this in one day. If you are able to stick around for a while and decide that we actually do have a lot in common, then I would love for you to subscribe and join this amazing community where we're all in this together. But let's not waste any more time and jump right in. Heading to Vegas in my blue stripe car. She's riding shotgun and she looks like a star. Yeah, she's got the style that makes you think she's made out of gold. She says she likes it better when we go off road. Yeah. You know that saying, the only consistent thing in life is change? Well, here we are changing it up again, or should I say tweaking it? I know it's not ideal to have a bottle washing station on your kitchen counter, it's not that pretty, but when you have a newborn, then you know that it's temporary and it's a must for function. So in today's video, we are going to clean up the kitchen one more time. I'm gonna create a bottle washing station and everything on that side of the kitchen. I'm reconfiguring and moving some things in the pantry. Now in this little area over here, you guys have probably never seen, it's like a little bar area. And I've been avoiding these kitchen drawers and cabinets for quite some time, but um, I'm finally going to get all of this stuff organized. I'm adding some extra shelving in the pantry to give us a little bit more extra space. And then I have a mini grocery haul and kind of restocking the pantry. But the pantry does need a little bit of organizing refresh, so I'm going to do that as well. If you're new here, my name is Michelle, and a couple of years ago, I was that person. You know, the type of person that shoved everything into a drawer or cabinet, and as long as you couldn't see the mess, then you just pretended like it didn't exist. I would also roll my eyes when I saw a perfect Pinterest pantry. 
But after my first big organizing project, which was my pantry, and mind you, I had no idea what I was doing, I look back and cringe and think, how could I have ever let it get that bad? And I do have a video that proves how bad it was. So regardless of where you're starting out, just keep in mind that things are always going to be changing. Don't worry about perfecting anything the first go around. But I also have a six week old and two toddlers and as our family grows, so does the chaos. So on my channel here, I do lots of cleaning, organizing, home decor, and some home makeover projects. But in every video, despite what it's about, my goal is to inspire you. So if you enjoyed today's video, then I would love for you to subscribe and join this amazing community. But let's go ahead and get started first by picking up the kitchen. Let me feel your love again. Cause I've been running round in circles screaming out your name. Take me to a different place. Just the two of us and we can stay up all night. Kissing under street lights. Doing what we want to. Doing what we need to do. Staying up all night. Everything is all right. Oh, I want to be with you. Oh, I want to be with you. So I just got a question on my Instagram from Carolyn. And she asked me, does anyone appreciate all of the cleaning, organizing, or picking up that you do around the house. And I'm wondering if this question was asked because sometimes, you know, as a busy mom who is constantly cleaning your house, it just feels like we're on autopilot and it's just like a never ending hamster wheel where we just clean, pick up, cook, turn around, clean up, pick up, cook. And in reality, it's not hard work, but it's just so much work and it just seems to go unnoticed by a lot of family members. And that in itself is probably one of the most unmotivating things is to constantly do and do and do things and then it never be seen or appreciated. So here's the way that I look at it and I'll answer this question in a, in a second. But I look at it as do I give other people in my family the appreciation when they do tasks? Because one, first off, I can't control anyone in my family's actions or decisions, but I can control mine. So first off, I would say, you know, am I giving my husband enough appreciation when he does, you know, a lot of the outdoor work or when he works really hard at his job or when he accomplishes, a, you know, an extra task or am I rewarding my kids when they are picking up and mind you, they are still young, but um, just small little things. Now I can say I'm not always great at it, but I certainly try. And I notice when I accomplish tasks, then I get similar feedback from them. So yes, when I go above and beyond, like when I organized the, the kitchen drawers, which you'll see later in this video, when Chris got home, the first thing I did was show him the drawers and he's like, wow, that looks awesome. So yes, I do get appreciation and feedback, but I also try to give appreciation and feedback to other people in our family whenever they accomplish something. Now, if it's everyday cleaning, everyday laundry and dishes, then probably not so much because if it was said too much, then it'd probably just be like, oh, okay, yeah, thanks. But um, definitely when I work hard on a pr organizing project or when the house is trashed and I spend a lot of time cleaning it up, then it is noticed in our family. Another thing that we've worked on is that men or, you know, our partners or kids, they can't read our mind. So if you are frustrated and, you know, feeling like you're not getting noticed, I know that I have felt that way several times. Um, I communicate it like, you know, I did all of this hard work and I really don't feel like it was appreciated. So it's not that they don't appreciate it. It's that that maybe we're looking for feedback and we're not getting it, but maybe they don't know that we need that feedback. So you know, communication. And I'm sure there's a lot more that goes into all of that, but um, that's just kind of how it works with our family. For us, it's true what they say, communication is key. One thing I need to change up is getting a better system for our bottles. So I saw this bottle organizer on Carla's Sweet Life, her Instagram. So I'll link her channel down below. 
Um, and I also saw a couple things on Amazon that I picked up in order to help me better organize the drawers in that bar area. And then I didn't get to putting that together yet. I wanted to reorganize one of our kitchen drawers that we already had and I was planning on using this but I didn't get to it in this video. But one of my favorite things that I put together in our pantry were these sliding shelves. These shelves were sold out at a website that I saw and then on Amazon they didn't have these exact ones and I was particular about liking these specific ones so I noticed that they were M-Design so I went directly to the website and purchased them from there. They were really easy to put together. So in the corner where I plan to put our bottle organizing system is where I have like our fruit tray where it has like the hanging bananas and then fruit and vegetables we put in there. Um, so my plan was, because I need to move all of that away from that corner, was to use these baskets to put those product, those produce and, you know, fruits in. They came in a set of two and I miscalculated the sizing, but my plan was to put them on the bottom shelf. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the pantry a little bit and then put those together. So I'm excited to share that I'm starting an email newsletter. So if you sign up to be subscribed to my newsletter, then either weekly or bi-weekly, I will be sending out different types of tips, organize, whether they're organizing tips, productivity tips, how to you know stay productive throughout your day, either some video recaps as well. So if you've missed a video, I know that we can't always watch every single video, then I may send out a video recap that just lets you know whatever kind of inspiring topic I may have mentioned or an organizing tip or hack or just some additional motivation, then um, be sure to sign up for my email newsletter. It's linked in the description below. So from that, I did get an email with a question on how do I organize a very small space on a very tight budget? Also that their Dollar Tree doesn't have really great options. So I get it when we see all of these bins and boxes and organizing tools and gadget to make our life easier. We think that we need all of it. So I get it. I've lived in, in an apartment for eight years of my life where I shared a small bedroom with my sister. So I can understand not having a ton of space. But I would first say start with decluttering. Now I get it. I'm not great at decluttering. But the rule of thumb is to always have fill up the space about 80%. You can create zones in your space without having containers. Now, the benefit of having containers is that it does keep those items contained within that space. But you don't have to start out that way. And I think that people get so caught up in those containers and bins that they think that they're not organized unless they have that, which is not true. They help with maintaining it over time. But for products, one of my favorite stores to look at that is reasonable, not, not Dollar Tree products, but reasonable products are, is Ikea. Target, as well as like your local TJ Maxx or Home Goods, will have products as well. And don't feel like you need to buy the name brand products. Now, in my opinion, Amazon can be hit or miss because a lot of Amazon sellers are just resellers. So they tend to mark up the price because it is convenient, even though it still seems lower priced, um, it, it can, you know, add up over time. But real quick, while I'm putting together these um, like drawer slash shelves that I'm adding, um, I had these refrigerator liners and because I'm putting, I plan to put like fruit and different produce like potatoes or, or anything that can, doesn't need to be refrigerated in these, um, I'm not the best about throwing things out whenever they get moldy or they start, you know, getting bad and sometimes if you know like 
especially like limes, apples, oranges, and stuff like that, they might even start leaking. So I'm putting these liners in here so that it won't leak onto the floor in case uh, it ever goes gets that bad where I don't see it and don't throw it out in time. And as far as budgeting projects with organizing, I just want to say it over and over again that it does not have to be perfect the first go around. So again, this is like my third time going through the pantry and I'm just now adding you know, additional products. So you don't have to have all the products like right at the time that you organize it. So just start off, if you can afford like one or two baskets and you find it necessary, then just purchase those first time around. Next go around, you know, buy another container if you feel like there's something that is not working. And I know that this seems obvious and common sense, but I promise you it's so easy to get caught up in, you know, maybe the way I organize or the way Pinterest organize or the way you see someone else organize on TV or whatever the case may be. And you think that it has to be perfect the first go around and you need to spend $200 on all these products the first go around. It does not. So just keep that in mind. As far as spacing, um, adding additional shelving like this. So when you get a chance, you know, you, you can create multiple shelves, um, additional space by adding, you know, different types of units like this. And there are a lot of affordable ones you can find, you know, maybe on Amazon or elsewhere. You just have to do a little bit of digging. Now I had those on the top shelves. They did not work because my containers came up too high. So I am trying to reconfigure to see how I can best fit all of these on the bottom shelf. There's another side of you trying to break through so after I got all of these shelves locked in in the places that I wanted to I had to rearrange a little bit then I headed off to the grocery store to restock this pantry so I just got back from the grocery store I just put in all of the um, little shelving containers so that I can kind of rearrange the counter space and see what I can fit in there but I did just get back from the grocery store um my little rye pie wasn't having it so he's gonna join me here and then um i'll do a like a quick little grocery haul for y'all just to show you guys what i got so first off some fruit um some bananas i like to mix these in my protein smoothies um some peaches strawberries and then also i don't use spinach for anything but um my my smoothies so i'll mix some spinach some of this and then some protein with that some just some easy vegetables that way i don't have to cook a bunch um i just got some green beans corn and then i like i like beans there's some more beans somewhere else around here um then some of these cutie oranges the girls like some syrup for for breakfast time some organic milk and then these tuna packets i like to mix with these pre-made salads so i'll walk over here real quick and show you guys some of these pre-made salads um, is what i eat for lunch a lot and then i'll either mix some chicken or some of those tuna um, here's this here's some extra beans and then here is some fruit Put that over there and then for dinner, I don't always buy this pre-made um, green beans, but I've had these before and they're so good. So I bought the pre-made green beans and Brussels sprouts, um, but usually I try to make my own and not buy them already made. But these are easy to just like throw in the oven. And then tonight for dinner, I'll probably, we'll probably eat this chicken um, with some of that. And then that's for another day, just some bacon wrapped chicken. Um, some cottage cheese. This is a good snack that is um, low in carbs and high in protein. And then Lunchables for the girls. Um, Nutri-Grain bars. I really like these, but for the girls as well. Fig bars. 
Um, and then these are for the girls. They, um, you know, if I need to bribe them to do something, these are a great trick to do that. These I've never had before, but I'm going to try. Um, they're not like probably not very healthy. Um, but you know, they looked good. So I'm going to, I'm going to give them a go. Um, sweet potato fries are my absolute favorite. Uh, Tater tots, we don't buy these a lot, but I, I figured the girls, they like them, so I was going to try them out. This is cauliflower, um, so it's made out of cauliflower, so, you know, gluten-free, non-tortillas. They seem decent, right? 16 carbs, that's not too bad, but um, try those out. Usually mix it with some turkey meat or something and make, like, tacos. Um, just some regular cheese cheese sticks, cheese blend, and then um, over here is where... So the volume kind of messed up on me, but what I was saying here was that I'm trying this like turkey salad lettuce wrap mix, um, easy to make for my lunches. I don't spend a lot of time meal prepping. I used to do that. It just pretty much took away a lot of my time on Sunday, and I don't love, you know, meal prepping all day on Sunday, especially with kids. And then that's also a day that we like to, to do different things. So sometimes I do buy lots of pre-made stuff. So here I bought um, a pre-made kale salad with the rotisserie chicken, which most of, I mean, I can get a rotisserie chicken and cut it up probably would have been easier. But again, I'm just like anything that is just super quick and easy. Also trying out this Hawaiian bread. Um, for you know to make sandwiches and stuff i haven't had the hawaiian one i usually just buy the whole, the whole wheat one but um we'll see how it is and then the dairy whip or the whipped cream i use that on my coffee every morning the popcorn this will be my first time trying out the sweet and salty kettle, kettle corn it is amazing i love it and then i got some extra cleaning products just clorox for the toilet bowl cleaner um somebody recommended the scrub mommy to me so i purchase that um, also the dre the um, draft bottle wash cleaner if you saw earlier I was using the dawn dish soap and it's just very very strong like I could smell it on bottles after they were already cleaned so I just needed something that wasn't so strong smelling especially on on bottles and then lastly just some flushable wipes and then I typically do 80% non-toxic products but our shower bathroom is horrible so i'm going to, going to get this oxyclean that was also recommended to me and scrub the crap out of our shower um, probably in, a, in an upcoming video you'll see that and lastly i bought this festive poopery smell spray for our guest bathroom it's a pumpkin spice smell and it is so good i've never used this before but you spray it in the bathroom and it just keeps the bathroom smelling fresh so that was just about everything this go around. And now I'm going to start restocking and putting everything away. You were my best friend. Didn't care about the rules. Good on the weekends. I'll be in fools. Drift in the deep space. So brave and so stupid. Just like the movies. How it's going to stay in the fight with you. Just thinking we would do this until we couldn't.
So here is where the new drawers come in, where I'm going to use them to put fruit and vegetables in. I haven't fully figured out. I'm not gonna label anything because I don't know exactly if I wanna keep it that way, but anything that was hanging over here, I'd usually put the you know bananas and potatoes or onions and everything hanging over there. I'm getting rid of that and everything is moving into the pantry. It actually works really well because the girls can easily, the fruit opposed to some other snack. Now that I have a place for some of this stuff in the corner to go, then I can create a baby bottle slash baby product station over here, kind of hidden in the corner. So again, I saw this one on Carla, Carla Sweet Life. And the reason why I was drawn to this one is because it's vertical. So I like things that create vertical spaces. So up and down, opposed to like taking more of the counter space. I'm saying let's go. You're saying maybe. Let's find a disco. So I did need some additional space because it wasn't big enough for all of, you know, baby bottles, the pump stuff and everything that I needed to use. So I kept my red drying rack there, but I ended up later on purchasing a different one that matched better so that my red drying rack is for like my pots and pans and stuff. So um, I ended up moving that, but just later on. Now I know this seems like a lot of stuff on my kitchen counter for baby stuff, but I also know that it's temporary because I've already done it twice and eventually it will be gone. Now one thing I struggle with is finding things to hide the cords and the plugs. Like I would like to get rid of all of these white canisters, but I the reason why I like them is because they hide the cords. So do you guys have any suggestions on what you use to hide cords without having something in front of it or do you typically just put something in front of it leave me a comment below let me know that is pretty insane you need to break free live fast and die young and let yourself go let yourself go My last and final project for this video is to declutter these drawers and the counter underneath it as well as on top of the refrigerator. So these two drawers are a little bit hidden. They're kind of across the pantry in a little hallway that leads into the dining room. So I never go kind of back here a whole lot or definitely never open those drawers because they are junk drawers and I also have like a lot of dog stuff in there. So I'm gonna go through declutter both drawers and see how I can best organize it. Because we use this as our bar area, then it only makes sense to put like thing utensils or bar utensils in this drawer. Because I don't know what's in the other drawer either, I'm going to go ahead and empty out that drawer as well before I organize both drawers in case there's items in this drawer that I need to put in the other drawer and so forth. So next I have a trash bag, so I'm throwing away anything that was just junk and that we're not gonna ever use. And then next is I'm going to categorize. So we have a lot of stuff for the dog, like their medicines and stuff like that, brushes and things, um, de-shedding tools. So um, 
I'm going to pile that into one category and then I will create a drawer that is just for like the dog products and then the other drawer will be more for um, like bar tools. Want to keep it nice and clean, not freak out and cause a scene. I try to hold it together, keep it together, not show who I really So this organizer contraption tool I found on Amazon and it looked really nifty in the box and when I was reading the the stuff about it, but I am probably going to take it apart and return it because one, it's not long enough to go in my drawer or maybe it was just my mistake for not like reading all the specifications before I ordered it. But the idea behind it is that you can create your own sections based on you know your needs and you can move the sections around. And um, I don't know, I just didn't feel like it was great in this drawer, probably because it didn't fit, but there wasn't enough spacer sections um, or however you call it. Um, but anyway, I don't have a lot of stuff in this drawer. Like I said, just a couple of stuff for the dog's needs. So um, for now I had it right there, but knowing that it's really not long enough for that drawer. For this one is where I wanna put all of our, you know, bar accessories. And I bought those two little containers from Target. And that's all I'm using in this drawer, not a whole lot of other stuff. I'm just gonna organize the other items um, just in the back there. And the next thing is this cabinet here down below. We hardly ever go in this cabinet and I bought nothing to organize this cabinet. The only thing I'm gonna do here is take everything out, um, declutter some of the stuff that we don't need, and then I'm gonna put it back in sections, but um, there's no containers or anything that I'm putting in here. As I'm going through this cabinet, I'm going through a lot of the stuff for the dogs and we have a ton of flea and tick medicine. Oh my gosh. Um, several years ago, our dog Piper, who's our black lab, um, we had another dog, a German short haired pointer, which was, he was so hyper. Unfortunately, he passed away from cancer um, two years ago. I want to say, and he was only three years old, but um, so we had a lot of stuff for two big you know, hunting type dogs. But, um, several years ago, our dog Piper got infested with ticks. And let me tell you, ticks are horrible. I mean, they were all over our house. It was our, in our old house and we had carpet everywhere. So that I would find like ticks embedded in the carpet and they're not easy to kill at all. I don't know if you guys have ever had problems with ticks, but I had bought all different kinds of stuff to like get rid of ticks off of the dog um, as well as in the carpet and stuff. So oh, I just hope that you guys never have to go through that. But yeah, it's pretty bad. It was pretty bad. But here's just everything kind of organized in different sections and decluttered. Lastly, I'm going to clean up the refrigerator or on top of the refrigerator, which is where everything goes that needs to be out of reach of children. So hence we have lots of 
candy and knives, the most important things that do not need to be in a child's hand. I got this weight on my shoulders, slowing me down. I don't know how it came about. And why the world is spinning faster every night. I feel I'm stuck in reverse somehow. But it ain't no one's fault that I am stuck here. No so as I'm finishing up here, I'm just using the e-cloths, which if you're not familiar with those, you just wet them and the cloth itself with water is supposed to get rid of 99.9% .9 of germs. So I'm just using that up here and finishing up the kitchen area. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you next week. has been a little bit difficult for me and not because I'm doing some massive decluttering in my closet and my three kids closets it's because I look around at all these other homes all these other videos all these Instagram pictures and I fall into the comparison trap you know the saying the grass is always greener on the other side well in this video it's time to look down water my own dang grass and get this project started now decluttering videos are always the hardest for me to do and post and I even went back and forth on how much I was going to share because I always get the most pushback on these types of videos. But it's like seeing someone maybe a little overweight going to the gym and expecting them to have a six pack the next day. And even if they did magically have a six pack the next day, it would not be sustainable unless they worked at it a little by little over time. And sometimes even in real life, not everybody wants to cut everything out of their diet to maintain that perfect six pack. Sometimes you wanna eat cake every once in a while and you're okay with those five extra pounds. So that's where I'm at with my decluttering journey. So in today's video, I'm working on my own stuff in my closet, in Rye's closet, who is five months old, and also in my girl's closet, who are five and three. So what you can expect in this video is lots of progress, not necessarily perfection, and I have lots of tips to share. Some I got from a magazine, some I got from a post on Facebook in my Get Organized group, and I wanna share all of these different tips and tricks because I don't think that decluttering is a one size fits all. Um, it's more of a what fits for you. And all of the experts will suggest all different kinds of tips and tricks, but not all of them work for everyone. So I'll throw out a bunch of really interesting tips that I have read over the last few weeks, and that way you can pick and choose which one works best for you. If you're new here, I'm really glad to have you here. My name is Michelle. I'm a mom of three kids, five and under, and about a year ago, I did a mass declutter in my closet. I'm back again this time, not only doing my closet, but doing my kids' closets and dressers as well. In my videos, I have a little bit of a different approach. Instead of always getting you to clean your house or declutter your clothes and tell you all the benefits of that, I like to help you work on your mindset so that you then feel encouraged 
to get the things done that you want to get done. I don't think that your worth in life is defined on how clean or organized your home is. I think so. It's defined on the type of person you are, the connections that you build with others, the encouragement you have, the time you get to spend with your kids. And, and that's what I'm here to do. Build a connection. We're in this together. And I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and stick around. But let's go ahead and get started. Let me feel your love again. Cause I've been running round in circles screaming out your name Take me to a different place Just the two of us and we can stay up all night Kissing under street lights so my goal in my closet today is to mainly go through the rest of my maternity clothes and get rid of anything that could pass as maternity. Um, I have a big clear tub that I need to give back to a friend to donate and then I have a whole nother box of maternity clothes to get rid of. Now once I finish getting, you know, fitting into the rest of my other clothes, that's when I will go through, try on stuff and then do another mass declutter. But for today, it is mainly just lots of maternity clothes and then a few other stuff. So let me take you back a little bit and tell you a little bit about my like decluttering past, which kind of was non-existent. Um, when I was younger, I moved a lot. I lived in several different apartment complexes. In fact, um, my whole high school, I shared a room with my older sister as a teenager in a two bedroom apartment. So we didn't have a whole lot of stuff. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of clothes, I guess you could say maybe kind of average. Um, but in that sense, I never really did a ton of decluttering just because there wasn't a whole lot. Um, there was no concept of minimalism or anything like that. Um, as I got older, Chris, my husband and I purchased a home. Everything we had was hand-me-downs. We had like one couch, one coffee table and TV in our living room for the longest time. Um, and then also a hand-me-down dresser. So we didn't have a whole lot of stuff. We lived in that home for five years before we built the home that we're in now. And we have been here for almost eight years and it's the longest home that I've ever lived in in my entire life. It went from kind of just me because Chris used to work out of town during the week and then he would come home on the weekends until that just lifestyle didn't work for us anymore. And we changed it. He got a different job and I still never really had a decluttering routine because there just wasn't a whole lot to declutter. And like I said, I, there was no minimalist. Like I didn't strive to be minimalist. We just did had what we had and that was it. Um, as our home grew, as Chris started staying home a lot more, our family grew like we had three kids in the last five years. The amount of stuff we've accumulated just became a lot. And I had no habit. I had no routine or anything like that um, until COVID hit, right? So when COVID hit, and also I was very career focused. I did not, I was not focused on cleaning my home. I was focused on my career. And that was more important to me than like having an extremely clean home 24 seven. Um, also, I'm not high on conscientiousness. So a couple of weeks ago, I talked about like different personalities and how your different personalities can define how you know structured you are, how there's genetics involved in it, environment involved in it and so forth. So I'm not super high on the conscientiousness chart, which is like very clean, very planned, very organized. Um, so I have to work on, on it a little bit. So after COVID hit is when I started, you know, that's when you kind of, you, you're home a lot. So you're like, okay, well, what can I do that would make me more efficient? So that's kind of where my decluttering ish, cleaning, organizing ish journey started where I didn't know these little baskets, these little bins even existed. I just never thought about spending money to put things in a bin, to put them in another bin, to put them in a drawer. But as many of you guys say, the less you have, the less you have to manage. And if you choose to have a lot of stuff like me, then you might as well organize it. 
So that's when I decided to buy the bins and the baskets and the containers and give this whole organizing thing a shot. I started in the girls room trying out the KonMari method. I think my biggest fear was that I wouldn't be able to maintain the folding style, but I bought the bins, I did the KonMari method, and then I've continued ever since. I next moved on to, at the time Savannah was my youngest, I moved on to her room, re bought the bins, did the organizing KonMari style in her room before moving on to my clothes. Lastly, I finished with Chris's clothes, which I'm reorganizing here again. And this horrible broken dresser, every time I pull it out, the whole drawer falls down. If you can't tell and I'm like holding it up, it's because we have kept it because we're like, oh, we're going to redo our closet. And then we have yet to do that. So we just are redoing our bathroom now. If you've kind of been following along, you know that. And this closet project was supposed to go along with it. All the Ikea, the whole Ikea pack system, we are supposed to like get this custom closet and build it, is still all out of stock. So, but long story short on that, we haven't fully made a decision. So until then, we can just keep coming back here, try to declutter and keep it as organized as possible so that whenever we do make the decision, the transition will be a little easier. So next I'm going through all of Chris's pants and work jeans and you know all of them just kind of piled up on this shelf is not aesthetically pretty so I had bought these specific organizing cubes for like thicker clothes like these um, jeans and pants. I had been asking him for over a week to come through the closet and he needs to do another more thorough declutter. and he didn't so I am going to consciously make the effort to go through some of the pants I don't think he's gonna wear anymore and the ridiculous amount of socks that he has and put them in a trash bag and then he can if he decides to go through them and take out what he wants he can do that if not then it's going to the donation pile so it's not that he won't declutter it's just getting the time to say you need to stop what you're doing come over here and go through all of these clothes. I think that was always my issue as well is making a conscious effort to actually do it. So here in just a second, these are the cubes that I purchased off of Amazon. I have the ones that go in your dresser. These are a little bit taller and they have bigger spaces. So it fits six items. Um, I've seen people put like um, heavier sweaters and stuff in here and then this is what I'm going to be using for his jeans one it came with in a pack of three um, and six little slots so I'm going to use one for more of like his going out jeans and one for more of work pants work jeans um, in my la in my last declutter video of the closet I had some people comment like Chris's clothes still has like all of these tags on it he doesn't even wear them um, so whenever he worked for the gas company and here it looks so much better than just like piling up all unorganized, but he works for a gas company and they, um, provide the employees with fire safety clothes. So he actually had a whole ton of work clothes that were provided to him from work. And then when he quit his job there, they just never got used. So it's, it's, I know you guys, a lot of people are like, y'all waste so much money and there's all these tags. Well, you, you don't know the whole story, but I don't ever think to, to mention, I don't know if that's important or not that, um, his work provided him clothes and he no longer works there, but now we're going through, um, donating some of those items. So next I'm moving on. These are the girls pajamas. They have their pajamas in our room because they'll take a bath in our bathtub where I can watch them and then they just hop over here and grab some pajamas. So that's that's that. They have a lot of pajamas. Um, the way that I fold them is KonMari, and then I bought these organizing cubes to keep them together, and then they can come in here, pick whichever ones they want. They can easily see them. And um, what I'm doing is going through the ones that are too small 
so that anything that's like 2t and under is going into a donation pile and then i'm kind of moving them around since they can kind of both fit into 4t so sailor's 5 and a 5t they can both kind of fit into 4t and then savannah is 3t um i have a little bit of extra because i just have different all different sizes that that fit right now i'm not gonna play nice i'll be the witch you tell your friends about i'm the crazy ex-girl you pretend you don't know because you know i could ruin your life rumor has it you have someone new she'll regret you like a bad tattoo because you'll never change you'll always stay the all about me i don't give her nothing sticks to me baby yes hon i'm teflon i don't give an f so go ahead and tell them i'm a little bit too much for you maybe you're not man enough cause it's been my mind yeah spit it out i don't care about if you think that As I mentioned earlier, I had gone through all these socks, like the full intention of him doing this decluttering with me for this video, but it just didn't happen. So I'm gonna go through some of the socks I don't think that he needs anymore. If they have holes in them, I'm going to throw them away and everything else, if there's like way too many of a certain pair of sock, then I'm just going to put them in the white trash bag, which is going to donation. All of the gray organizing bins you see there came from a pack from Amazon where it comes in three different sizes, the larger bin, the medium bin, and then a smaller bin that I, I don't use those ones as much. I mainly just use the large one and the medium one. And then any of the ones you may see in there that are white are from Ikea. If you're contemplating spending money on cubes and was a little hesitant like I was in the beginning, um, it is a game changer. I have them for everyone in our home. I didn't start off that way. Like I mentioned before, I started just in one area and then slowly moved on to each person in the house. But all of these clothes you see here are ones that I am donating and decluttering as well as the huge tub and the box full of the rest of my maternity clothes. So once I finish up here, I'll show you some before and afters, but I would say the organizing made a huge difference in this space and the decluttering I'll continue to work on a little bit each month. I feel the warmth of your skin. I feel the touch of your hand. Love you with all of my heart. Makes me tremble within. Next, I am moving over to Rye's room. So Rye is my six month old. And right now, all of his stuff is pretty organized. If you hadn't seen like our nursery video or have been following me for a while, we, I was given so much baby clothes, like 
all the way up until like my sister-in-law gave me clothes up until like 40. So I have a ton of clothes. My mom helped me go through and organize a lot of the clothes that were given to us. Um, and then in these drawers, so my, the top two drawers are all zero to three months. And then the bottom two drawers are all three to six months. So I am don't, um, actually I'm giving it to a friend who just had a baby, um, all of the clothes and because it's all organized, it's so much easier to just put in a box and give it to her. And then the next thing I'm going to be doing is going through all of the clothes that are like six months and plus, and then filling up the new clothes there. Rye is our last baby, so I can gladly donate all of the clothes once he's grown out of them. As for when I had the girls, I would hang on to everything because I didn't know if we should save it, if we were going to have another baby, if it was going to be a girl or not. So um, I can finally start going through and then just donating it right off the bat. These are the two boxes of clothes that I'm donating this time around. And then I'll start going through the tubs of six month and older clothes, pulling out some of the winter clothes and then organizing them into the organizing bins that I have there. But I told y'all that I would give you some tips of things that I've recently read that I thought were helpful and maybe you can incorporate them into your decluttering journey as well or pick and pull the ones that resonate with you the most. So my mom gave me this article from a magazine and I don't even know what magazine it's from, but she was like, here, you talk about this kind of stuff. Maybe you want to read it. So it was like minimize your stuff. And the author is Liz Clearman, but she had like 10 tips. Um, not all of them resonate with me, but I'll just kind of read through them and put my kind of perspective on them. But tip number one is more like getting like in order to help declutter yourself is that you would ask yourself, would I take this with me if I was moving? My problem in the past with moving is that I would just dump everything into a bin so I wouldn't go through it, but that could be a good question to ask yourself when going through your stuff. The second one she says is, do you use it, love it, and need it? And if you answered yes to any of those questions, then you would keep it. The third tip was to get rid of the guilt of decluttering things that other people have given to you. Now I had to think about this one and it kind of depended on who gave it to me that I do get guilt of getting rid of things that I feel like the closest people in my life have given to me because it's like, if I feel like I get rid of it, that means that I didn't appreciate it, but that is far from the truth. But if it's not like a super sentimental item, then I can look at it as it's, I, it's used its purpose, I've appreciated it, and now it can go to someone else who would also appreciate it fourth tip was to embrace minimalism and you guys know how I feel about minimalism I don't disagree with it I just don't know if I can fully live to that standards but once I read her tip about it um, she kind of is like minimalism isn't doesn't necessarily mean that there's just empty white plain walls no sense of character one small couch, maybe three shirts total, no color or character or decor, which that is what I think of when I do think of minimalism. But I do like her theory on it. And she basically said that there is no single version of minimalism. You only have in your home the things that make you happy. 
So I liked her concept and her version on it that your journey is going to be different from my journey. My version of minimalism is going to be different from your version. And you may be farther along on your journey than me. But the cool thing is, is that we're all trying. We all have our own versions of it. We're all trying to make our own spaces manageable. What might bother you more may not bother me as much. What might bother me more doesn't bother you as much. So we're all different and we can all embrace it in our own unique way. Her tip five is uh, she said she got from the minimalist um, recommendation and it's called the just in case mindset and embrace the 2020 rule. I haven't heard of this one, but I have heard of another another version i'll tell you in just a second so this rule is basically saying that sometimes you look at something you're like oh i might need this just in case um she refers to it like as a kitchen gadget i refer to it as my clothes i have seasonal clothes or like let's just say a dress and i'll be like oh i might need this just in case um i go somewhere fancy and you know sometimes that never happens but her theory is saying, or like the minimalist theory is saying that, ask yourself if you can buy it again within 20 minutes and for less than $20, chances are you can, so you can pass it. And then if you ever need it again, then you can purchase it. The other tip is from Dana K. White. She is a famous YouTuber here. Um, you probably, I assume if you're watching decluttering videos, you probably have heard of her. I know of her channel, but one of the things that res resonated with me from her channel was what would be the price for me to replace this if I in fact ever needed it. So she had an example, like she pulled out googly eyes from a craft drawer and she's like, I didn't even know I had these. And then she was saying like, whether you're thinking, um, and it was like an unopened pack. So it's like, do you, do you um, declutter it or do you keep it? you know, and you would ask yourself like, where would I go to find this if I needed it? And then what would be the price for me to replace it? So if it's like, you know, three or $4, then she's like, okay, I don't need these. I probably will never use these. And if I ever needed it, then, you know, it'd be three or $4. So that kind of reminded me of the same concept of the like under $20 rule. But there are some things, um, especially with clothes that I know that I was going through that, um, that I was thinking, you know, this is a nice fancy dress. And I purchased this for a wedding maybe a long time ago. And I am never going to probably wear this again. So it's over, um, it's over, you know, $20. But I have to kind of think to myself, I don't want to hang on to it. But if I were invited to a fancy event, which I know doesn't happen any that often in this season of my life, then I would be really excited to get something new. So I do remember that's one of the things I thought of um, the first time around when I did a major decluttering and I was getting rid of a lot of like fancier dresses but it reminded me of a similar concept. So her tip number six was, you deserve to have clothes that fit you now. So if they don't fit you now, get rid of them. Now, I am in a little bit of a limbo. I may disagree with this a little bit because I am postpartum. And just real quick, I'm moving on to the girl's bedroom. So the two middle drawers are sailor's drawers. So on the left side, we have all of the long sleeve and a couple short sleeve shirts. Since it's winter outside, I have more of the long sleeve stuff out. And then on the right side is all of the long pants. And then I'll put some of her um, school uniforms in there. And then on the bottom, same thing is just Savannah's clothes. My goal here is to go through the closet, um, go through the dresser, get rid of everything that is 2T and under. But as I was saying about um, her tip number six, that if the clothing fits you now, if it doesn't fit you now, then get rid of it. Uh, I, the reason why I disagree with this one in my life right now is because my clothes don't fit me right now because I'm six months postpartum. I'm about 10 pounds away from my goal weight, so they do not fit me 100% comfortably but i'm not going to get rid of all of my my whole entire wardrobe um right now i'm going to i have a couple clothes that are kind of in limbo but i think once i get back down to my goal weight my clothes fit me really well then i'll go through and get rid of everything that i don't like anymore so again these tubs in here are all 
2T and under, I kind of had been saving them to give to um, some people I know who have had a daughter, but I need to get rid of all of it now. I can't save it and wait for, you know, the kids to grow and then give it to them when it's, it's the right time. I need to go through it now. I have one big tub here that is going to be closed that are sailors that are getting passed down to Savannah or that are seasonal, like Christmas dresses that I know will fit them next year. Um, and also I have some summer clothes in there that are also going to Savannah. So I bought a couple more organizing cubes. Like I said, these ones are also from Amazon and I'm going to go through, I like the bigger ones better. So that's why I'm going to kind of switch through some of those, the medium sized ones and move them into the bigger cubes and then reorganize that top section. So that's my goal in this room. But as I'm doing this tip number seven, don't buy storage containers until you know what you're storing. So do all of your decluttering first. Don't waste your money on accidentally overbuying storage containers or buying wrong sizes, etc. So it makes sense, right? This is a big one. This is the one some someone will comment to me like almost every video. The less stuff you have, the less you have to organize and maintain. 100% correct. I've even had someone say, why are you organizing? You just need to get rid of everything and then you don't have to organize. I'm like, well, that's kind of not where I really, I, wa I want some stuff. So I'm okay with organizing it. Um, I feel like having it organized makes it easier to maintain, but right, the less you have, the less you have to organize. So hence why I'm here trying to get rid of stuff, trying my best, right? That's all we can do is our best. Tip number nine, save all your sentimental stuff for last. If it's harder for you to get rid of those stuff, then wait till the end to go through it. And then her last tip is to watch people and listen to some of the experts. So let me know which one of those resonated with you the most. I think that the one that resonated me with the most is that everybody's version of minimalism is a little bit different. And the less you have, the less you have to maintain. So I'm constantly trying to think about that when going through and getting rid of stuff. Clothes are my absolute weakness, but I'll get there one day. I've been going out on my head. I've been waiting for someone to get me help. All I'm asking for is just some space and some time, then I'll be alright. I've been having thoughts in my mind. I can't get up. Tell me things I can't say myself from you and nobody else. Last fall, I was invited to speak at the Get Organized virtual conference, which was a huge success. And I talked about how to get motivated to clean and get stuff done when you lack motivation. And within that, I joined the Get Organized virtual Facebook group. And just recently, somebody posted the question or the admin actually posted the question that said, what advice would you give someone who is just starting to declutter? So there was a ton of amazing comments from people who had given suggestions. And then if you have suggestions as well for someone who is just starting to organize, um, you can also leave them below in my comments as well so that people can read those. And I wanted to just read a couple of them uh, to see if that could help as well. So here we go with just some of the suggestions. They say, do a little bit every day and don't give up. I feel like that's where I'm at right now. I want to do a little bit and I just want to keep going and not give up. Um, someone says, don't start a declutter, start a daily maintenance. So that's where they failed. If they would try to do a big declutter, it didn't work. But as long as they like worked at it every single day, then that's where they started seeing progress and maintenance. Um, um, someone said it doesn't come overnight. It'll take time. Um, it'll take a process because you know, you have to maintain it. So I totally feel that one as well. 
Um, someone said, get an accountability buddy and encourage them, encourage them each day to try and get some things done. Uh, think about how many years it took to get your home decluttered. So don't expect it to be all uncluttered in a month or a day or one time. Reading these comments makes me feel so good. Um, I'm always, like I said, I'm always scared to post these because I get attacked by people for not having like a perfect home. And I think that some people expect it to be perfect and I'm a, I'm a real human and I post my real life. So, um, it's definitely been a, you know, process for me as well. So someone else said, set a timer, you know, that way you have a start and stop time. Don't give up. Um, someone said, just pay for it. Don't do it yourself. Hire someone to come and do it all. Um, someone said, don't compare your progress to others. Just use it to get inspired. Um, someone kind of says, don't underestimate small increments. 15 minutes a day over a month can make, you know, a day or month can make a huge difference. Someone says, you know, start with the most visible areas first, like your living room, your kitchen, um, and stuff like that. You know, whenever I read the home edit book, they they said to start in your storage spaces. So like your closets, your attics, your basements, because when you start into those main areas, then you need, you need, like if you have overstock and you need to store some of those important things away, then you'll have your storage spaces available to store those items. So just different ways to think about that. Someone said, once you decide, once you have your trash pile, your donate pile, then don't go through those items again and don't start pulling stuff out. Someone said, focus on one shelf at a time. Don't overstress yourself. Start with just the trash first. If you don't know what to donate, then just go through everything that is going to be trash, baby steps, do one room at a time, finish one space before moving on to the next space. And then so many suggestions that are just saying, be kind to yourself, give yourself grace, baby steps, you can do it, just get started. So so that is just such some valuable advice. If you, any of you guys have went through or currently are in the process of your decluttering journey, you can always feel free to comment down below. How did you get started? What helped you get through it? What advice would you give to someone else who is struggling and obviously know that you're not alone I lose my breath whenever I see you you stole my heart what is it that you do my life was great till you added colors like the moon needs the sun we don't care about the It feels so good to have gone through everyone in our entire home's clothes, especially all the the kids' clothes because they grow out of the clothes so fast that it's like you have to constantly be decluttering and getting rid of. The organizing bins have been so effective for me to categorize. I do not color code. That's a little bit too much upkeep. I've tried it, it doesn't work. I just feel like categorizing light clothes together, pants, sweatshirts, um, sweaters, long sleeve, short sleeve, works way better for me than to also maintain color coding. But I'm so glad that this process is finally done, at least for now. 
I hope that you enjoyed and got a few tips from today's video. This is all of the stuff of the kid clothes, kid shoes that I am no longer holding on to. I'm finally getting rid of the tubs of clothes and shoes, um, donating it to somebody who will need it. And then I have some space in my closet, but subscribe if you enjoyed today's video and next project will be the kitchen, but I hope to see you guys all next week. Said that they don't got a future, future like uh, it burns. So give him something worse to kill his head with, make him forget somehow. Might be that another day she would have wished he stayed, but they're done. Sorry, it won't be enough this time. Yeah, he's calling all his friends to get some action and distract him right now. He's fine, but Lucy on the line, let's get this started. Where's the party tonight? So as I was putting this video together, I knew that the playroom needed to be decluttered pretty badly, especially with Christmas coming up. And I tried to think about how I was going to put this video together to make it the most helpful, I guess, for everyone. And if you guys know that decluttering is not my strong suit. So it's an area that I have been putting off. So I keep thinking and thinking, how am I gonna make this video and talk about making decluttering easy when it's hard for me. So I, I, if you guys recently know, I, I got back on my Peloton bike and I was doing a workout and one of the instructors was just like, there's just no easy way to do this. It's hard, but it's temporary. And you know, it may be hard, but you can also do hard things. And for some reason that hit me and I knew exactly what I needed to do. So for you, whether that's decluttering like me or cleaning or working out or cooking or whatever the case may be, it is hard and it's just going to be hard, but you can do hard things. And if you don't lean into the discomfort of it, then you'll never see progress. So as hard as it might be, let's go ahead and make some progress in this room. And I did want to thank Costway for sponsoring today's video because if they had never reached out to me to um, pick out some different furniture items to help put together and talk about, then I never would have started decluttering this room. So I'm excited to show you guys some of the pieces I got that helped me kind of create a different zone for the kids. Also helped me declutter and organize it a bit better. But I'm certainly glad to have all of you guys back here helping me today because when I do do these projects like this and record, I think about all of y'all. So as much as, you know, I get so many messages about how you say that I help you and y'all that just makes my day. I can't even begin to tell you how happy that makes me. But um, you guys help me out so much because I probably wouldn't go to this extreme to do these decluttering and organizing and really changing the house up if it wasn't for y'all. If you're new here, my name is Michelle and over the last two years is when I really started to try and take control over my home. And in fact, my very, very, very first decluttering video was the playroom. So I have a five-year-old sailor, a three-year-old Savannah, and then I have a two and a half month old baby boy, Rye. So about two or three years ago, we turned this space into a playroom. And as our family grew, we just accumulated so many toys. I mean, you guys know birthday parties, Christmas, Easter baskets, just you name it. The piles of toys just starts to overcome you. I feel like getting rid of toys is either probably really easy for you or really hard for you because sometimes you tie an emotional connection with them, which I do. Like I remember exactly who got her that toy. I remember 
what age she was playing with that toy. I remember how much she loved playing that toy and how it made her feel, which all of that emotion kind of is also what makes it hard for me to disconnect that and just say, it's junk, let's get rid of it. Another thing that makes it hard to disassociate with the items is the money spent. So even if you bought something and they didn't play with it at all, then you're like, man, they didn't even play with this. Maybe they'll want to play with it in three months or six months or a year, or maybe, you know, the younger sister, or younger brother want to play with it. And then you just hang on to it. So there's so many different reasons how I feel like things can pile up. Um, so there's so many things that can make decluttering challenging or hard like it is for me um lots of probably overthinking about it but then again there's just no easy way to start and you just have to accept the fact that we can do hard things and we will feel so much better when it's done hey won't you pour me another i'm going in so wish me good luck yeah i gotta put on my favorite song i need a boost Let's turn up the love No, it is Way too late, but I just can't get my eyes Of you Maybe we Will regret this But tomorrow is another Day And I will do anything I will do anything To get your Love Hey, won't you pour me Another so when trying to think of tips and tricks to get rid of toys, I feel like it's a little different than when you're going through your stuff because when your stuff, you can, you know, think about where would I look for this if I needed to use it? Whereas with adults, I mean, we don't play with our kids toys. So it's like, I don't really need any of this stuff, but what will they need? And how organized do I need to make the space because how organized can they keep up with? So since my kids are young, three and I mean, Sailor just turned five last week. Um, you know, it, it's kind of like I have over organized before where I had the play kitchen and I had all of the pots and pans in one bin and all of the silverware in one bin. And I'm like, yeah, my kids are not going to put the silverware back in the bin that I want it to go in their play kitchen. So let's just be realistic about the way that it's organized. Um, but what I have found the easiest when first putting together the playroom is just creating zones. So right now we have like the kitchen zone. Um, as they've gotten older, we've had the Barbie zone. We have like an art center zone. We have a reading zone. And then we have the blocks zone like where they can like play with blocks or other random toys so my goal is to still keep the zones and then try and get rid of all of these little little toys so everything that i'm going through here kind of gets thrown in a box like in a bin like this and that's what i want to avoid so i decided to also keep the girls involved so i know sometimes it's kind of iffy whether or not we should involve the kids because they're not going to want to get rid of anything or not involve the kids and just get rid of it while they're away that way there's no crying or you know decisions that need to be made on their part because for them and i heard this on the home edit one time um that for them they've had this toy probably their whole life right so they're not going to want to get rid of anything so you know, it was kind of, do I keep them involved in it or do I not? So I decided to keep them involved in the process a little bit, and then they can also go downstairs and then I'll, you know, put, you know, go through some of their stuff later as well. But, um, sailor, my oldest, she did pick out a few things to get rid of, and she even named people she wanted to give it to. So that was really sweet. Um, kind of helping her learn that we don't need all of these things you know there is a possibility we'll get new things for our birthday and you know santa claus might bring some stuff but for you know overall there's other people who don't have things so um passing it down is very nice and kind so we talk about that and they she's starting to understand that a lot more so the next day when I move on to their bedroom then I don't keep them involved while I get rid of a few stuffed animals of theirs Landlord. You come back and say I'm 
I'm working with two trash bags right now. One is for anything that is going to be going in the trash. So any toys that are broken, have a lot of missing pieces that, you know, again, are really old or damaged, then those are going straight in the trash. The other bag is for donation. Since like I mentioned before, I have different zones set up, then my plan was to go through each zone one by one and then start the decluttering process. I tried to keep a lot of emotion out of it. That way it wouldn't force me to keep more things that weren't necessary or that they didn't play with. I tried to disconnect a, a dollar amount to it. I tried to disconnect a memory from it. I tried to disconnect everything and just say, are they ever gonna play with this? No, do they have multiples of it that are very similar? Yes, let me just keep one. And then um, that's kind of how I went through the process. But here we're taking this TV off. This was Chris's original old TV from, I think it's almost 15 years old and it weighs a ton, like one of the first flat screens I think that came out. So we had switched one of our TVs from our bedroom. So we're using this one, which is more of a smart TV. Um, and that way they can start watching Disney Plus and stuff like that up, up here, opposed to in the living room. But as I mentioned before, I'm getting a few new items from Costway. So I needed to get rid of one of the zones in our in the playroom so that I have enough space for the new zone that I wanted to create. And that includes getting rid of the kitchen set. And also I had like an organizer there. I'm also moving that downstairs into a downstairs closet, um, but just moving that out of the playroom. But that organizer just held too many small toys and that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid is all of these small little toys. But I did ask the girls how they felt about getting rid of their kitchen and they both said that they were okay with it because we are getting a new dress up center. So that way they can put more of their jewelry and makeup and dress up clothes into that area opposed to the kitchen. And they said they would play with that more opposed to this. So that's why we are going to get rid of that. So Chris is gonna start putting together one of the pieces that we got from Costway. Costway is an online home store which has a variety of products including furniture, outdoor furniture, kitchen appliances, home decor, bath, baby and kids, toys, sports, pets, and so much more. What I love about Costway is that they have a very fast delivery, receiving your item within three to five days, yes, including furniture. They have a 24 hour online service and their products are great quality. The product that Chris is putting together right now is the kids armoire, which is perfect for the new zone that I'm creating in this room because it is what the girls are really into right now, which is dress up, makeup, and accessories. This one is really spacious because it includes multiple storage areas. So I didn't want it to just be something for dresses. I wanted it to also hold, like I mentioned, like the jewelry or the makeup or hair ties or whatever else they decide to put in here that all went within this zone. It came with easy instructions and Chris was able to put this together in no time. Once I get the space cleaned out, then I'll show you guys what it looks like and then also a couple of the other things that I got from there. But be sure to click on the link in my description box to check out Costway and they do have some awesome stuff for the upcoming holiday season. So gifts, organization items, whatever you need. 
So as Chris is finishing that up, I'm continuing to declutter the space. And this is what I mean about small toys. We have some purses and there is just stuff packed in these little purses. And what happens is the girls bring them downstairs and then they'll open the purse in the car and the garage and they will just be stuff everywhere. So I'm going to try and contain a lot of this stuff. And like I mentioned before, get rid of that stuff. But since I've cleared out an entire zone, which was the whole kitchen zone, and I had like an organizing thing over there, I'm gonna clean this space up, and I'm going to move the dollhouse or the Barbie house into this corner. That way when you walk in the playroom, it's not such an eyesore, um, but it it's nicely packed in that corner. And then I'm going to create a new zone, which is the um, dress up area right in front of the window. Now that we have it set up, then we went and picked out some of the play dresses that they were going to put in here. I know these dolls look a little creepy, but they like to braid their hair and stuff like that. So like I said, any type of accessories, jewelry, shoes, play outfits are all going to go here. And I like that it came with these bins because instead of like making this super organized i'm just going to put all the purses in one bin and then all the jewelry in another bin because and then at the very bottom i'm going to put some of their dress up heels but as far as the jewelry goes i don't plan to have it super organized i'm basically just going to throw it all in one of those plastic bins and then i'll put the plastic bin into the gray cube organizer because I know at their age, they're not gonna keep it super organized, then as long as it just stays contained in that cube and not all over the floor, then I'm okay with that. So while we were putting that together, then Chris is going to work on putting the next piece together, which is a three-tier bookcase storage organizer. This is actually going to go in the girl's bedroom. I don't typically like to have a lot of toys in their bedroom because we have a playroom, but some of the things that they do keep in their room are books and stuffed animals. So when he finishes all of that, then the next day is when I am moving on to their bedroom and I will organize this piece. But Chris did say that this was really easy to put together. And again, this is another piece that I got from Costway. Want to keep it nice and clean, not freak out and cause a scene. I try to hold it together, keep it together, not sure who I really am, just be cute and super bland, I try to hold it together, keep it together, been playing it down, but I'm so getting tired. One of the last areas that I'm working on in here, and I, I've been calling them zones, I think because they do on the home edit, and that's just now the way that I picture it, but the last area that I'm working on is going to be, this is kind of where I created our art type center. So it's all the coloring books, stamps, markers, um, anything like that was on this three tiered tray. I thought this was the best way to keep it as organized as possible. So all of the colors, crowns, actually there are no more markers. I'll just say that just crowns at the top. And then I had, um, coloring books on the middle row and on the bottom row. But I moved just coloring books on the bottom and then I had those two plastic containers from when we had the kitchen. I just moved them there and then I have like those fidget poppets or whatever go in there and then the other one is just empty in case you know I have a new category that needs to go there. But I think for the most part I have fully decluttered to the extent that I wanted to this go around and organized and have gotten rid of and actually a lot of stuff or at least for me it is but one of the other things that I also got from Costway was this kids toy box so if you can see like on the right side of the um kids like dress up center I have all, all of the Barbies and Barbie accessories toys and it just is an eyesore 
Um, I, I like having color in the playroom. I don't want it to be bland. Like I know the more neutral it, it looks and everything, it looks a lot nicer, but I think that kids just like color. So I, I want to keep color, but that was kind of an eyesore with all the Barbie. So um, this piece from Cost Costway, I thought would be perfect to put all of the Barbies in, Barbie accessories, and then like the horses and toys that they play with. And then that way, it doesn't look too much of an eyesore when you're walking in the room and everything looks nice and neat. This is also a lot more sturdy than some of the baskets that I had. So this is the area of all of the stuff that we are donating. So this is our donate pile, which turns out to be quite a bit. But next I'm going to finish up in their bedroom. <laughs> I just recently redid this bedroom and had them share a room, but one problem area that we keep running into is this corner. I had an extra chair in there, a chair that I refused to get rid of, but it was making the space crowded and not working. And right about here, I reached up and totally hit my head on the top bunk. So this is a bunk bed and, and I was not expecting that. But my process to get through this room was to kind of drag everything out of the corners, everything under the bed, behind the beds, put it in this area, and then go through each individual stuffed animal to whether we're going to keep or donate. And also go through some of the books because some of the books had like pages ripped, torn in, out of them and stuff like that. So a lot of, so some of the stuff we kept. I kept some of the stuff I put in a donation bag and then some of the stuff I put in a throw the throwaway bag. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights. Won't stop for traffic lights. Now that I got that corner cleaned out, then I could bring the book storage organizer and put it in this corner. And what I did was any of the smaller stuffed animals I put on the bottom piece of that. You can also put like toys or whatever. Um, I kept one little basket for some of the larger stuffed animals. And then on the right side of the organizer is where I plan to put some of their extra blankets. On the top is where I'm going, going to store some extra books. It's the perfect size for this space. And another thing that I like about this product is that it is scratch resistant and easy to clean. Jumping from cliffs so high, trusting our wings to fly. Sometimes we're crashing down, but we get up and start from the ground. And I, I really want to know, really want to know, if I let figure out where the road So if y'all remember, here is a before picture of the space where this corner was just really cluttered and had too much stuff going on. The stuffed animals were everywhere. And now I was able to clean that up with the new organizer from Costway. I was able to um, section out the stuffed animals in the books and make it a lot more functional and nicer looking. I'm going to finish up cleaning the playroom. And when I show you the before and afters, like when I look at it, it doesn't look so different, even though I decluttered to me so much stuff but i think the idea and the thought of all of the small stuff that was in hidden in bins and basket is no longer going to be drugged downstairs all over the floor all over the car in the garage um, just the fact of knowing that gives me so much more peace also the maintenance of it is where i'm going to see the most benefit and that is the most important thing so here are some of the before pictures of what the mess would look like on a 
you know, weekly basis or so. And helping them manage this was a lot on me as well. You guys see me cleaning this playroom all the time, but hopefully having done this first round of decluttering, I have a lot of empty bins, so nothing to dump out, then it will make everything a lot more manageable. Let me know in the comments the space that you plan on going through next. If it's hard for you to declutter, then I hear you, I see you, I am completely in the same boat as you, but know that you know it is hard and that you can do hard things. So as I finish up showing you guys the playroom, if you're not already subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe and join this community. After I had this project going, I decided to do a whole declutter on the house. So um, just some small areas at a time. So next week I will have more of a house declutter kind of prepping for the holidays. We felt so alive and girl we were thriving on kisses and sunshine and mischief. Yeah, we had one of those things. Just have one of those things Ooh. I guess I've had some things So here's all the hard work that I accomplished in today's video. You guys can do it too. But I hope you guys have an amazing week and I'll see you guys next week. A new place, a new home for a while, let me feel alive Nothing to hold me back Take my time, just enjoy the ride I know man, passing by Life is good, best I've ever felt Get me up, so in it Somewhere I can't find myself I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive As I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to the sky Get this point of view. It's a rainy, gloomy, chilly day outside and you had every intention of sitting on the couch watching movies. After all, the garage really isn't my cleanup territory, but it is full of all of my decor. I had no intention of cleaning out the attic pretty much ever. I'm sure I've told y'all that before, but today presented an opportunity and we had to take advantage of this day. Have you ever been asked the question, how do you win a race? The answer is one step at a time. So here is my step one is to just get started. So in today's video, which just started off as cleaning out the garage a little bit, turned into a garage and attic declutter. So I'm putting away all of the fall decorations, more organized, as well as a lot of the Christmas decoration boxes. That way when I'm done with Christmas and putting everything away, it'll be a lot easier. So speaking of Christmas, have y'all started shopping for Christmas presents yet? So I am headed up to the attic now while Chris is kind of working on taking everything out of the garage. What I plan to do is empty out this attic as best as possible, sort through everything in these boxes, get rid of some of the stuff that we're not gonna use and hopefully organize it a bit better. Now, don't expect it to be Pinterest worthy because like I said, I had no plan on doing this today. We just kind of jumped up and went for it. So welcome back everyone who's been here before. You guys know how I am. Sometimes I'm just sporadic and sometimes I have a pretty good plan on what I'm going to do. So if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a mom of three and you'll probably see Chris, my husband here helping. So I'm better at decorating than actually organizing all the decorations. But if you want change, you gotta start somewhere. Another thing later in this video, I'll talk about some of the challenges that we faced doing this together because while I'm on a decluttering type journey, my husband is not. And a lot of this stuff is his stuff. So we run into some complications trying to get rid of some stuff, but um, we end up working it out. So let's go ahead and get started. Don't want to take it slow. Just want to let you know. Ready to spend some time. Come and sit with me, but 
take a walk with me i need to speak to you just want to be with you just let me take you for so we have a couple of different attics with storage in them and because we're in the south or in texas we do not have basements or anything like that we just have attics and this is the attic above the garage which is our biggest space but we did have to lie plywood down so that we could walk on it and not you know fall through the roof in the garage we have three more attics upstairs which are a lot smaller and we just have a few things of storage up there but this is the main space and this is the main space where i keep a lot of the christmas decorations and basically all of the seasonal decorations as well as chris has a lot of i'm just gonna say random stuff i know that we do have a lot of stuff so if you're new again chris has a landscaping company so we only have a two-car garage he has an entire workbench that's where my workout area also is he has like mulch and all types of stuff we have all kinds of like kid toys um so it's just and it's also like a hangout spot or like his man cave so we our garage is very multifunctional but because it's multifunctional it's also really cluttered so for years I've been like, Chris, get rid of all your stuff. And he's just like, no, we need a bigger garage. And that's not possible right now. So we're just gonna make it work. So yes, if you see like random buckets of like, it's like mulch and seeds and grass and stuff for his business. Um, and we do not have a, so he has a storage, but we don't have like a storage just for like decor or our decorations. So because getting a bigger space is not an option, then we are going to try to make the space we have more functional. And it is such an awkward space for the stuff that we have, but we're gonna make it work. So one thing I asked Chris to do was to build me something where I can hang all of my wreaths because I don't like piling my wreaths. And if you guys have been with me decorating, you know I have a lot. I counted 22. Okay, I know that's, that's like totally overdoing it, but just bear with me. I guess I really like wreaths. Um, so I asked him to build me something where I can hang them and I don't have to like pile them up and smush them. So he just like grabbed a piece of wood and nailed it into the wall. And then I'm going to hang all of my wreaths on either side. So he did one on this side and then he's also doing one on the other side. And then this way it's just so easy. It's out of the way. I don't have to buy wreath boxes and stack them up. Um, I'm going to try and use as much vertical space as I can because we do have, like I said, that like, our attic is just awkward. Once we kind of get everything down, then I, you know, over the last year, I have been trying to organize all of my decorations a lot better, my seasonal decorations. So I've been buying more sturdy bends. I've been using the Elephant Tracks labeling system to keep up with it. And whenever we put everything back in the attic, then we want to, um, have it kind of going together, like all of the Christmas stuff on one side, all of the Easter, spring, summer stuff on the other side. So here I'm trying to get Chris to go through all of his stuff and attempt to talk him into throwing things away. And maybe you guys kind of have the same issue where your husbands or your partners are, you know, you're on board to declutter and get better organized and they're just not up to it. Well, I kind of have the same issue. It's not that he doesn't want to get rid of stuff. It's that he thinks that we might need or use this stuff. And I'm trying to convince him that we're not. Like people give him stuff like this bicycle. Um, and he's like, oh yeah, our girls will use it. We need it because our girls will use it when they're older, like 10 years old. And I'm like, I don't want to hang on to a bike for five years that they're not going to use. I'm sure that in the next five years, you know, they can probably get a new bike for Christmas. And then we can just give this bike to someone who might need it right now. So since I've been doing lots of decluttering like over the last year, the thing that has worked the best for me is to do it in smaller steps. Like I know that the transformation looks so much better when you can get rid of like 80% of your stuff. But for me, that doesn't feel good. That doesn't 
make me feel better. I just like doing it little by little. And if I truly know I don't need it, then I'll get rid of it. So small steps, I'll go back to spaces again and do another declutter and then try and get into the ha that habit. So when we were doing this together, I had to remember that for me, it works best to declutter, you know, a little at a time. So I had to kind of understand that for him too. So I didn't like get mad that he didn't get rid of everything because to me, it's not my stuff. I don't need it. I think that it all needs to go, but to him, it's some of the stuff is important. So we compromise on a few things and a little bit is better than nothing. So we have just about everything down, including a lot of the older Christmas decorations. My mom had given me a ton of stuff whenever we moved, whenever I moved out of the house and then she moved into a different house. Um, and I, you know, would take everything, every hand-me-down I could get because I didn't have a lot at the time when we bought our first house. So um, my decor style has changed over the years. Um, but what's funny is that this year, if you notice, I started going back to red. So a lot of stuff was like the traditional colors. Then I went to like all neutral colors and now I'm tr starting to go back to some traditional colors, which is what a lot of this stuff is. But um, anyway, I'm going through each, each item and anything that is in the, um, what is that? An Amazon box or whatever that is, is all getting donated. And then um, anything that I decide to keep that I might use next year when I do a more, probably a traditional look, then I'm going to keep that in the boxes I have. We've had this conversation and you seem to agree with me. But when there's complications, you withdraw and leave me to be. When there's a problem, you become like a wall. And every time I trip, it's a free fall. Why don't you have What I'm putting up now is all of the fall decor that I had packed away probably a month ago. And yes, it's been sitting in our garage and also Halloween stuff. So all of that stuff is nice and organized. All of that stuff is going up. And kind of a problem I have right now is all of my organizing bins from the Christmas decor is sitting in my office that I recently <laughs> cleaned, which is now kind of a disaster again. So here it is. These are all of my organizing bins. Um, as I purchased new Christmas decor, I also purchased new organizing bins um, because I know that those the prices might go up after the holidays because everybody's going to need new storage bins. So as I was you know, purchasing more stuff, I was also trying to think about how I'm gonna store everything and how many more boxes I might need. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, what we're gonna do next is take all of the, em these are mostly empty. There might be a few stuff that I didn't use that I put back in there or like some bubble wrap and stuff. But for the most part, all of this stuff is going to go back upstairs in the attic, organized, and most importantly, easy to get to. So that way when I take down all of my stuff, I can do it myself if I need to. Um, and it'll be so much easier but it does have to get worse before it gets better. And here we go. Over the last couple of years, kind of more so when I started my channel two years ago, I went from not very organized to slowly starting to organize all different spaces in my house and also trying to declutter a lot more. So with that, I put in a lot of effort into organizing and obviously sharing all of that with you guys. But I feel like there is a point where being super organized is a lot of work in itself. It feels like a lot of upkeep to keep it that way. Like for example, I organized our pantry and don't get me wrong, I will never never go back to the way that it used to be, but it like will take me 45 minutes to unload groceries. So as much time as I feel like it saves you looking for stuff, it still takes time to upkeep it that way. 
So as much as I would like every space in my home to look like it just came out of an organizing magazine, I try to be realistic with how I organize and how it's going to function. Some spaces I keep more organized because I'm more picky about it, like the clothes, my clothes and my girl's clothes. I will take the extra time to fold it, you know, KonMari style so that it stays pretty organized and my pantry because those are where I've seen the biggest changes um and then other spaces i would probably say like the garage and the attic like i'm doing now i'm going to organize it but it's you know this is just step one phase one right it's probably not going to look like it came out of a magazine also like not looking at this space every single day if you're worried about how it's going to look then just don't worry about that just worry about how it's going to function for you what spaces are worth the upkeep of being super organized and what spaces eh, can you kind of get away with? Now decluttering is a separate task, but it does go hand in hand with organizing because you know, the more stuff that you can get rid of, then the less stuff you have to upkeep and keep organized. But for us, as our family grew and not our space, then the more stuff we've accumulated. But just like cleaning, organizing, and decluttering are, are a revolving door and an upkeep. So I definitely am trying to get in the habit of doing this a lot more often. I think the number one thing about organizing and decluttering is finding time. I feel like that is the biggest struggle because it takes time. It takes physical time. It takes mental time to think about how you're going to do it, what you're going to do with the stuff, what you're going to get rid of. And that is something that we, a lot of us just don't have. But like they say, you don't find time, you make time, and today just happened to present an opportunity. So now that those cold, crummy, rainy, for some of y'all snowy, not here, days are coming up, then take the opportunity to do a little bit of decluttering and organizing if you think it's going to make your life easier. Now this took all day long, I was cussing, but I don't regret doing it one bit. So now we are just about finishing up. I'll show you guys some before and after pictures in just a second. Even though this took all day, this was a bit of a shorter video for me. In fact, leave me a comment down below if you like longer videos, shorter videos, what your time preference is. But um, I hope you got some motivation on this quick one. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. And this isn't your plan.